All right, so, so so far we've been using the NIF version of the standard barrel, which I made in NIF scope. So we'll make the, the official version of that in a second. Like, like we did with the receiver, but I went ahead and created the iron sights uh, version, which shares the receiver mesh. If you're, if you're wondering what materials are being used by what, you can use this drop picker tool and just click on the mesh and that'll highlight the uh, the material. So I made that earlier. It'll highlight the, the material that's being used by the mesh. So it's just a useful little thing in case you're ever wondering what material is being used by what. So I'll go back into wireframe view. Uh, yeah, so the, the, there's a child scope um, node an attach point here and uh, there's also a P scope on the receiver and those are in the exact same position. So this is important if say you had the mesh somewhere out here but the point was you know here then the if I just reorganize this when the pivot point then snaps when the child scope snaps to the parent one then you know you might get this weird sort of position out kind of thing out of position so you want to make sure that you create your child and parent nodes in the exact same position and uh, we'll see how that comes into play when I import the barrel so let's import I exported a few more FBX compared to last time. Again, the naming does matter for those. You can name them whatever, whatever helps. So th well, this is interesting. So we've we've imported the barrel and everything else has disappeared. And this is due to the way the layers work in 3DS. So if we open the layer manager, this is going to be a lot different to, to 3DS Max 2015 because they, they changed the way it works in 3DS Max 2015. You have these um, openable layers and, and stuff and they work differently. I actually preferred this 2013 layer manager for a while and I think I still miss a few certain features from it but anyway the tick here means that that's the current active layer just like you have a certain blue layer in 3ds 2015 this is the exact same thing when you create new objects they'll appear in this layer. These bulbs if the if the bulb is visible then that means the layer is hidden whereas if it's empty then it's not. It's, the, it's actually the opposite of what you see in 3DS 2015. When the bulb is lit, you can see it, and when the bulb isn't lit, you can't. Whereas in this, if you can see the bulb, that means the layer's hidden. Ah, oh, so confusing. <laughs> uh, next we have, yes, yeah, so certain layers that you can open and close. Oh, didn't mean to double click there. So what we should do is, let's create a new layer and name it in all caps, receiver. Now, the reason why there's all these layers here is because when you import an FBX, it also comes in with all of its layers. It comes in with the layers, with the correct meshes underneath the correct layers, but it brings in all the other layers in the scene. So what I like to do is use a script called purge layers. You can find it with Google again, <laughs> just, uh, just Google 3ds Max purge layers. You should be able to find it pretty easily. So let's select everything. Oh, I think I just purged my new layer, which I just made, that receiver receiver layer. Oh, what, I, what happened then was because I because I had selected all of these parts and then I hit new layer, that instantly put all of the parts into the layer. But let's say if I, if I wanted my new barrel to be in the receiver layer, all I'd do is I'd click the layer and I have the barrel selected and I'd click this button and that then adds the the barrel to the layer. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to make, I'm actually going to select it, just hit new layer and call it barrels. Because I'm going to be putting all the barrels under this one. And uh, we can just delete this empty layer just by clicking the red X. Uh, the purge layers only works on empty layers. So all our layers with stuff inside them are actually fine. So let's go into left view and then snap pivot to this. Um, parent barrel point yeah p barrel and then we're just going to drag it across the actual pivot of this part doesn't matter um, but the 
the, the, the child point of it does. So let's find the P barrel and then clone it. Create a C barrel. And then that's going to be, because we cloned this, it's going to be in the same hierarchy. So let's just detach it and then bring it over here to the barrel standard. Okay, uh, this, this this name doesn't actually matter. That's just what the, the, the root node is named when you export it. Let's, yeah, let's connect that to here. And then the C barrel and the P barrel isolate. They're both in the exact same place. P barrel, C barrel. So when we export, it'll work perfectly. Uh, maybe I forgot to export, so let's just quickly unlink, xform, relink. Perfect. Uh, you might have noticed our receiver has a, a green weapon node as its root, whereas all the other modifications can actually have a mesh as their root. That's fine. So I'm going to export, go here, and hit G so we can actually see the, the meshes, and we're going to export them into the, the Elric convert meshes folder. Let's call this barrel standard. The naming does matter because this is the, the mesh which we're going to be using in game. And then we'll open Eric again and convert files and then we can convert the barrel standard and then find it in here. Go to our barrels folder, export and then I could test it in game, but I think I'll also do the scope. So here's the scope. So we're going to make a scopes layer. I think those went in. Ah, yeah, there we go. Uh, and then, yeah, wake up schematic view. Let's export. I can't really remember the naming convention. I think it's something like scope irons, scope iron sights or something. But they all start with scope. Let's just go with this. And then use Elric to convert. Well, yeah, I'm going to click date modified so it stacks the, the most recent NIF to the top just so I can click the top NIF every time to convert the most recent. And I'll just simply back up and then again click date modified so I get the most recent file, go to scopes and paste, and then I'll open creation kit and link up the NIFs. Actually, I think while creation kit loads, I'm going to import the grip. I might as well show doing that. So here's the grip. All of the layers have come in again, so quickly purge. Make a new layer, call it grips. And then the pivot point's way off, but it doesn't really matter. What we do need to do is sort of judge it by eye, unfortunately. Which is sometimes the case. In 3DS 2015, if I had, for example, changed the pivot point so that it was snapped to the top left most point somewhere. Yeah, let's go with that. And then X formed it. I might as well do it actually. Let's export as this. So I reset X form. I'll delete the old grip. I'll import the new grip. And now the pivot is in the top left. So if we isolate the frame, go into left view, and then snap. That should be good. Let's close some of these. Oh yeah, purge again, might as well. And then add this to the grips. Ah, oh, my grips folder. Grips layer got killed by the purge. So we can't see if we've selected something for some reason, unless we go into edged view and we can see that the edges are being highlighted white. Still doesn't really help. I spend most of my time in wireless view, to be honest, in 3DS 2013. So we can see the, the, the grip lines up really well. 
and what's left to do is let's put the grips to the right side so again it like I did with the UV mapping, I've sort of put the receiver as a central thing and then the scopes to the upper right, barrels to the left roughly, and the the grips to the, let's say, bottom right. So roughly like how it is on the, on the gun. Ah, yeah, the material. I forgot about that. So, <laughs> yeah, ah, so this, this mesh is actually going to show up invisible in game because it's using a 3DS Max material, the combined material which we made. So let's quickly use barrel standard and then load the barrel standard BGSM and apply it. And the same thing with the grip before I forget. Just shift drag out the material. Grip standard. And th this is just how I like to organize things as well. So I just go, you know, the different barrels will stack down here and there'll be, you know, another grip. And maybe the scopes will be out here and that kind of thing. Ocaton. There we go. <laughs> uh, grip. Comfort. So yeah, the, the naming doesn't matter for these. Let's apply this and then load. I don't think I have BGSM yet. So BGSM isn't existing, so I'm just going to duplicate all these naming conventions. I don't need to apply it again. Or do I? Might as well, to be safe. So that BGSM will be applied and we need a grip attach point so let's find the grip and again clone it c grip unlink and parent to the standard grip cool then export it weapon and what I'm going to do is I'm going to oh, I should I should export the barrel again because we've applied the material on it and Eric can convert multiple NIFs at the same time so we can just open both of these and it'll do them both and then back up to our work folder maybe copy the grip first paste it into grips and then back up and copy the barrel forwards into barrels and over right that's just a work. That's just a vanilla file I'm using for reference. I'll probably get rid of it because I know what I'm doing now. Yeah, so the creation kit should have loaded. Yep. Just the menus have gone a bit weird because of the lower resolution I'm using to record. Let's go to weapon. That's my keyword, my short keyword to <laughs> show the weapon more quickly. So this is what we've got so far. So the barrel's barrel's in the wrong place. We need to assign the new NIFs. So it's purple because we loaded the CK after we um, created the material. And I think this actually might be to do with the X form. Yeah. I might have said that the pivot doesn't matter, but I'm probably wrong. <laughs> Let's save, double click to refresh, and then preview. So this, yeah, the scope is slightly out. So yeah, uh, that's actually misinformation. So sorry about that. Looks like the same thing's happening with the grip. So what we have here is the, the attach point is in the right place. It's perfectly aligned with the, the parent attach point and the child attach point, but our issue is the actual mesh, the pivots of the meshes themselves do not match with their their node counterparts. So what we're going to do is isolate each node and make sure that the pivot is aligned to the node. 
Oh, and then I'm going to unlink the node. Reset X form. Remember, if there's anything parented under anything that you're reset X forming, it can go wrong. So it's just safer to unlink anything that's parented to something that you plan to X form. And you don't need to X form nodes at all. So now our pivot is perfectly aligned with the barrel, the node. And we can export again. And then next, let's do the grip. So unlink, align, pivot to pivot, parent, export. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reset X form. I'm rushing. Iron sights. Align the pivot. See what happens if I X form. So nothing happened then. You, you can probably X form without needing to unparent nodes like this if it's simple, but meshes can tend to, to mess up if you do that. But in this case, it was fine because it was simple. So yeah, we got away with it that time. Go back to Elric, and then we're going to convert the last three NIFs because I just changed and edited three NIFs. Back to the export. Let's do barrel first. Right, back, back. Grip standard. Going really fast now because you know what I'm doing. Back to the creation kit. Double click. Right click preview and everything looks pretty much perfectly in place, which is really good. You can kind of see the, the benefits of using 2013 over NIF scope now. We might have to look into that shading. It's probably fine with the texture on it, but I can just see something going on there. Might be fine. Might be fine with the texture on it, but yeah. yeah you, can, you can see the, the benefits of using 3ds Max 2013. It's just so easy to make minute changes to, you know, NIFs here and there. You can make sweeping changes to multiple parts, export them all, batch convert with Elric, and then copy and paste them into the, the correct place. And it's just so fast and easy to do compared to NIFScope where you'd have to open every single individual mesh. It's just easy to see all of the parts in one place as well. And yeah, long story short, the official workflow is often the best. <laughs> So I've actually put the speed loader inside the cylinder. You can see it there. I've hidden it inside. Pretty cheeky, but it works. But for some reason in the creation kit, it's displaying out here. So, oh, it might be because I haven't exported the receiver again after I made that change. Yeah, probably. Fresh. So this is usually how fast I go. Perfect. So when you view the, the revolver in your inventory, you can't see the speed loader because it's hidden inside the, the cylinder. You can't see it because the bullets are in the way. And even inside the, the cylinder, the, the casings are... Yeah, I can't zoom out easily. But yeah, the, the, the casings are all blocked off. Oh yeah, zoom speed, it's something I haven't really brought up yet, but if you right click you can actually edit this. So for, for small weapons that are, you know, the small centimeter based scale, it's good to have a, a lower zoom speed. Whereas if you're working with, with larger larger things like props and stuff, you probably want to be 1.0 or, or something similar to that. It just affects the, the zoom speed and it's more convenient so you can zoom into details if you so wish. So yeah, I think I'll be jumping ahead again. That concludes exporting with exporting NIFs from 3ds Max 2013 using the official workflow. I'll probably go over collision next.